So this was already a pretty obnoxious build to run up against uh, Solo. If you guys haven't seen my build video for this, um, the Void Paladin here, we are running Spear, which in itself is already a pretty obnoxious weapon because of the fact that you can stun lock people. Uh, but combining the Void Gauntlet with all of the debuffs, the staggers, um, the rend, it made just fighting this build alone already pretty annoying. Um, but then when you pair it with what um, our dual partner Astro is running, which is Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet, um, combining my stun lock ability with their damage and burst from spikes, um, it honestly just downright doesn't feel right being able to kill almost anybody. Um, we've killed heavy armor players from 100 health to zero with them pretty much not having control of their character the entire time. Um, getting a vault kick into a scream, into a spike, into a sweep is just uh, a disgusting, disgusting combo. We're going to end up seeing it here um, in some clips going up. But as I mentioned, I'm going to be giving you guys a update on all of my builds. But just to take a look at what I've been doing for this build here. Um, I've almost got all of my rune glass gems finished. I've got uh, my void gems here. We've got void on all of our armor pieces. Um, we've also got the uh, void dot on our spear, and then we're also going to get the void dot for our void gauntlet. And then on top of that, we dropped the um, champion's ring to get a void damage ring. Um, the thing that makes this combo just so ridiculous is on top of the fact that we can burst people so reliably um together with both of all of our abilities down we can generate up to two and i'm guessing almost three thousand damage per second in some instances uh between both of our builds and it's pretty wild um my build already was doing close to a thousand dot damage per second um, between my skewer, the bleed we got from sweep, having disintegrate stacks up, um, and then landing a oblivion. The dot from oblivion is actually very, very chunky. So I was already up to close to a thousand, but then getting that 15% buff to all of our void damage. Um, and then having the void dot on our spear and then soon our avoid gauntlet as well we are now pushing well over a thousand damage per second on this build and then when you combine that with what astro is running with their build um having an ice storm down and then a fireball on top of that uh, if you don't get bursted by the combo you will end up dying almost immediately after um so this has been a very 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 fun combo to run and the thing that gets me so excited about it is uh We've primarily been running this when the servers have been feeling the worst they've been feeling since the patch has come out. And the fact that we've, we've been able to have this much fun um, in the worst of the of how the PvP has felt is what gets me just so excited because I can't imagine what we're going to be able to do when we can actually play the game. Now, uh, I have made a slight couple of changes here. Um, the only actual equipment change I've made to the build video is just the ring. Um, but whether you're running the build video version or the version I'm gonna talk about here, which is the dual version, uh, the rune glass gems are gonna be the same. So you won't have to worry about switching those out. But um, as you see, I have gone for a uh, diamond gem in here just to be able to buff my heals even more. Um, what we did was we dropped 50 strength to uh, dump that all into focus and we essentially are just because we don't have to rely on ourselves for all of our damage. Um, the full mage has quite a bit of damage. Um, so honestly, we can probably drop a little bit more things to become even more tanky. But I like being able to be a offensive uh, threat as well. Um, I don't want to really turn this into a full tank, which was the idea of the build in the first place. But um, we lose 10% damage to our physical basics to get 20 to 30 percent overall heals on everything on this build that heals us 
and then on top of that we also get that five percent uh cooldown reduction so um yeah this is the setup that i kind of switched to when i've been running with astro and i'm sure that some of you that have been running the build that have kind of tweaked your own versions have already been trying out different things um with this patch with these new rune glass gems you can push your damage quite a bit um and actually get more tanky on this build if you want uh some of my equipment for example my um intelligence is at 52 no matter what with no food so i can't really optimize my points without changing up my equipment but you could definitely run something like instead of going for focus go in for that uh constitution if you're running a medium armor setup for example um, but there's definitely a lot of ways to move around the stats on this build which is really really cool um and i think kind of reinforces that paladin uh theme of the build because it should be able to in my opinion um kind of switch around where you want your strengths in the build whether you want your damage to be the focus the defensive options to be the focus the heals um i really like that i can kind of switch my stats around here but uh those were the only changes we've made to the builds, but taking a look at some of these clips here, um, as I mentioned, and as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, if you've been PVPing, it's been feeling pretty bad, um, but open world has been where it's been feeling kind of okay. OPR is definitely where uh, the servers start to chug a lot, but this little open world fight here we got is gonna really show how these two builds kind of function together. Um, the cool thing about it is we're both still solo players so you see we like to generally start out fights like this where we can because we both have that threat of damage we can line up and kind of corral people like that to uh line up our opportunities for burst um both of us have enough damage uh to just outright kill people but um together as i mentioned those staggers are just ridiculous but taking a look um at definitely the nastiest combo we got while we we're playing here it's actually literally too fast for me to even uh try to commentate the heavy attack from the ice gauntlet into the stagger from the scream into the stagger from the spike is just a ridiculous amount of damage to take and you're literally not able to play the game during that but following that up uh, we're kind of pushing towards the enemy base here and we've got a couple of enemies bunched up here um we've got them corralled up you see, I'm going to go in for the Volt Tick here. We land the sweep on all four. And literally, with the help of this Great Sword player, we bomb four players like it's nothing. Um, and as I mentioned, this was during the peak of the lag. Uh, so I just can't wait. I cannot wait until we can start playing this or these combos seriously. The burst isn't even the best part about this setup, though. Uh, with Astro's mobility combined with my sustainability, you can really, really drag out fights for a long time and uh, rack up some like crazy kill counts. Uh, it was really hard to practice during the lag in the OPR, but um, I was able to get in definitely a lot of experience uh, with this playstyle using the build. The thing that I have to practice uh, and that which is pretty crucial to the success of this combo is um, essentially staying alive, which is obviously easier said than done. Um, but I'm because I'm playing that tank or that uh, that pseudo tank role. I'm trying to draw aggro a lot of the time to kind of corral people um, to line up our burst. And I am still in light armor, so even though we are quite a bit tanky, we have a lot of heals. If we get caught in situations like that, it can be game over for me just as fast as it is for the opponents. Um, with some slick little movements like that, I can uh, find situations a lot of the time where I can keep myself alive, uh, but it's as easy as getting caught by a single grab wall um, with your abilities down for you to get taken out on this setup. So it's definitely not like a guarantee just wipe everybody, but um, I can see the potential 100% with these uh, with these builds. Easily the most enjoyable part uh, while I've been playing this setup though has been trying to push this build uh, to the limit to see how far I can push myself and survive uh, and get out of situations because that's really um, when we can play the best uh, and bait people into situations where they can die. Um, and you're going to really see how much of a difference that focus uh, change makes. We're absolutely just pumping out heals, um, making sure we dodge the big hits that we can, 
but we have taken more than enough damage here to die enough, uh, a couple of times. Um, but again, being that paladin, we lead them right into our, our drill partner, Asho, here. And uh, with them essentially using everything up on me there, um, cycling those cooldowns, keeping up those heals and those fortifications, uh, that is really the true strength of this dual setup, I feel. We still definitely have a lot of practice to do, um, especially myself, because I haven't played duo at all. Um, I primarily played solo, so switching from playing solo to duo um, is definitely a different dynamic. It allows for a lot more crazier situations to be possible, but um, you also have things you have to be aware of. But uh, jumping into this fight here, this mage gets caught with the bolt kick into his chin when he tries to get away with the burnout. And uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of open up a little fight here on the enemy back base. Looks like they have a healer set up on the uh, the back here and a rifleman. I'm going to go ahead and just try to go to work here. I throw out my Oblivion and Ashra throws out their Storm. And we're going to go ahead and just see if we can put in some work here. The healer is obviously going to be the target. Uh, but it's going to prove to be a little bit difficult to uh, line up our burst. Now, uh, you can see we're both going for that opportunity of trying to um, switch DPS uh, instead of just hard focusing the healer. And you see, I would have literally killed the healer there if not for the stopping power um, from that musket. So the musket definitely saves the healer, uh, the healer's butt there. But it uh, looks like they get a couple of reinforcements and uh, it looks like they have another healer here now. So this is definitely going to be a lot harder of a fight. But... Uh, Following up on Ashro's damage, we land the Volt Kick with just a beautiful combo there. And we finish off one of the healers um, just like that. As long as one of us can follow up on the other's uh, burst or CC, uh, it's that easy to finish people out. Uh, the enemy major kind of goes for Incinerate, and I kind of just tank it and land the Skewer. Uh, land a pretty chunky sweep there, uh, but I'm starting to get taken quite low here from all this damage. And... Uh, they seem to have gotten another uh, reinforcement here. The healer, though, is going to be my primary focus throughout the fight. We are able to line up a couple of uh, dots here, but I tragically body block my own dual partner. <laughs> you see me literally just stop fighting there. Um, this was 100% a winnable fight. And uh, <laughs> you can see how sad I was about it, but you can easily easily see the potential um of this dual setup i think with a lot more practice we can pull out some uh, pretty insane fights with these builds here but uh yeah if you have any questions about uh astro's mage build i'm sure they will be more than happy to answer uh, any questions in the comments but as always thank you all so so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one